Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans. Good evening, everyone. Sorry for that delay. It's just been one of those nights storming out at this neck of the woods. So internet went down. Can't promise it'll stay up, but fingers crossed. So we are broadcasting live for now on the United Public Radio Network, uh, New Orleans, UFO Paranormal Radio Network, 105.3 and 107.7 FM from the beautiful city of New Orleans. So tonight <laughs> we are fully sponsored by our wonderful people over at Folgers Coffee who've been a part of our journey since day one. So thank you, Folgers. We appreciate you so very much. Big thank you to Dr. Snake, the sonic surgeon, for his contribution of his time, his music, and his voice for the intro that you just heard. Big thank you to Steve McGinnis, the mastermind behind all of our logos and banners here at the show. Big thank you to him as well. So tonight, guys, we've got for the very first time Matt Rosk, who is the founder of Cultivate Elevate, to bring back information that's been suppressed and cause our society to become sicker and weaker, definitely less educated, I would say, on many levels. And we're going to be talking about all kinds of really amazing things. So I have sent him... Um, I've sent him the link, so we're just going to kind of hang in there and see. <laughs> so, uh, one second, I am just having a little bit of an issue just trying to get all of my information up because everything went down and I do apologize. Uh, Bubbles, of course, is not with us. Um, unfortunately, um, she's, you know, had a lot of, you know, has had some situations at home. They had to put down their, their pup, who's been a part of their family for a really, really, really long time. He was quite elderly. And uh, I think they're just going to have a little bit of quiet time. So, again, tonight it's just going to be us and you guys. And, yeah. So, again, just trying to bring up some information. Uh, D-O-R Wednesday. Oh my gosh, nothing wants to come up for me, guys. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But that's okay. We will manage, won't we? We will manage. <laughs> so nothing saved when this whole computer went down. But with that being said, oops, I think we got one. Oh, there's one. There's one. All right. <laughs> Not the one I wanted, but I'll take it. Um, so we are just waiting for Matt to come in. And honestly. I, I went, th this was like Amelia. Amelia said, you really need to, you know, check out this, this TikTok page. Because I don't really spend a lot of time on TikTok. So I said, yeah, of course, let's, let's check it out. And uh, holy crud. I, I thought, yeah, yes, yes. Let's, let's ask him if, if he would come on and, and check us out and, and hang out with us for a little while. And he did. And it was awesome. He was just wonderful. So um, hold on. I think I've got this here. Okay. So here's the link. Okay. Hold on guys. Bear with me. Uh, sent you the link there. Okay. There we go. Let's see what happens. Maybe he's having problems too. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I went and checked out, um, his TikTok page and the found him on Instagram and Telegram and YouTube. And I, just thought this man was bloody genius. <laughs> you know, it's like you think, you know, all this stuff, you know how you guys know, I just always got this stuff that goes on in my head and people look at me and go, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist. I'm like, yeah, damn good one. Anyway, I basically got validated many times over and thought to myself, yes, yes, this is good. Like-minded individual, love it. And we're going to, we're going to, tackle some stuff tonight. And um, I recommend anyone who has not 
check out some of the videos that we put on the group page to go and check him out at Cultivate, Elevate, and find him again. TikTok, Instagram, Telegram, YouTube, just do it. And you're going to come back and say, what the heck? <laughs> and I'll say, yes, I knew it. I was right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, without further ado, our special guest. Yay. Hello. <laughs> What's going on? Thank you for having me on. Oh, pleasure. Thank you for your patience. This never happens to me ever. And unless it's the network, it's got like a tornado or a hurricane or something. And it went down and I'm just like, <laughs> can't be a thing. This never happens to me. So anyway, thank you for your patience. I appreciate you so very much. And I've really been looking forward to this. Amelia right now, as I know, is really disappointed because she's the one who had reached out to you and they just have things going on in the family, but I know she's watching and I know she's just face palming herself thinking, why is this timing always <laughs> what it is? But anyway, I've checked you out on TikTok because I'm not a big TikTok person. You know, Amelia's on there a lot and she's always scanning for the show and things. And I have to say, you're absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for that compliment. And it's funny because I was actually just banned on TikTok. They uh, completely wiped my account of three hundred thousand followers, and oh, no. I created another page, which was Cultivate Elevate Two. And every time I would post a video, it would go up against the community guidelines, and they banned that account too. So that was all actually probably within one week or two weeks, a short amount of time from from uh, when the last videos were up there. I watched, I don't know, like 50 videos of yours just yesterday on oh, TikTok. Maybe you watched the clips. My, my, we have the a clips. page. Yes. That's, that's the only one that's still there. My main pages are gone. They completely wiped them after um, I showed the weather, you know, or weather right. that's being changed and things like that. Right. And I showed that here in Arizona. I filmed it and I put it up. And then I showed like, um, I did like an eating healthy one, five things of how to be healthy. And right. then all, both videos went against the community guidelines and they completely wiped the, the account. Oh, yeah. They don't want you giving any like good health information, of course, yeah. you know. Well, that's OK, because I followed you on Telegram and Instagram. So I've got my basis covered. Um, but I am sorry for that. It's it's sign of the times. And that's a whole other show. <laughs> I'm sure that would get us both banned if we went down that road. But um I've, I wrote out a list. I, I know, you know, we, we had settled on some things to talk about. I want to talk about all of it. And I've, because of some of the videos that I've watched of yours, I added, you know, a couple of things, but where would you like to start? I mean, I'm all about like you, you've talked about so much about frequency and energy and the pyramids and all of these, um, you know, ancient civilizations and things that were being suppressed, where would you like to start? Because I want to know it all, especially now that I can't go back on TikTok and find it. Um, you know, I mean, we could start on anything you want. I mean, I talk a lot about electroculture. I talk a lot about the old world buildings, you know, all the beautiful yeah. antennas that used to be on top of all the old world buildings. Yes. And always the first thing, which is always removed during the remodel of the old world buildings. They're always taking the antennas off the tops of the buildings. And those build, beautiful antennas that were on top of those buildings would gather the ether, the unlimited energy that's all around us, the fifth element. And right. it's interesting because ether used to be on the periodic table before 1908, but right. it was removed. And then we had a new periodic table that completely got rid of that. And then from there on out, we kind of have lost touch with that because Einstein debunked all of that and said that it's not true and that whole shabille. And then from here on out, we've never really dabbled back into that. But through my work and a lot of the, the videos that you might have seen and things like that, you know, I've done a lot of things going, OK, if we look at this, this looks like it's an atmospheric generator or it gathers energy from the air, you know, or from the ether. But, you know, we aren't taught about this because most people don't know. But about 1910s, 1920s, Rockefellers took over the educational system, <laughs> created the General Education Board. You know, yes. so everything that we've been taught that you have to unlearn. And I've right. spent the last years unlearning everything that I've been told and realizing mm -hmm. that it's always quite the opposite. But, you know, we can go whatever avenue you want to go. I'm more than happy to talk about. 
No, I love it all. I love it all. Thank you for that. Let's touch. Um, why don't we start with, with pyramids? Why don't we start with pyramids? I mean, you know, you go back in the day, everybody had like pyramid power. Everybody's heard of pyramid power, but have people really grasped it? Because I mean, Nikola Tesla had a really huge interest in it. And I found it fascinating when you talked about bees and frequency. So why don't we start there? So the pyramids are an interesting one, and there's over 2,000 pyramids on the earth. You know, we always are focused on Giza. You know, they always show us Giza all the time, and they're like, this is the only one, and whatever else. But there's about 2,000 of them. There's actually pyramids in Bosnia, which are four times the size. Yes. So this is an interesting one because nobody talks about that. Google tries right. to debunk that all the time, which is funny. But right. you know, the Bosnian pyramids are four times the size. The pyramids in Mexico are three or four times the size as well. But there's yeah. pyramids scattered all over. There's pyramids here in Arizona. They just look like a mountain and they have you know some cactuses and trees growing on top of them. But they're right. all over the place. And it's interesting because when you get into the materials of the pyramids, you get into a lot of sandstone. You get into a very highly conductive, highly energetic um, you know, material. And then a lot of the pyramids too, they used to be, they used to be gold on top of them. And they also had limestone. If you've ever felt limestone with your hands, if you put your hands on limestone tile or anything like that, you will feel right. the energy that comes right off of that because all the quartz. So, you know, when we think of these, you know, these, uh, these places where they would put the pharaohs and mummies and all that other nonsense that they try, right. to, you know, right. you, start to, you start to sit there and go, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know why, for example, do a lot of the pyramids have mercury underneath them? You I know? did not know that. Yeah, so a lot and of- I, And I've been to the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Yeah, there's a lot of, like a lot of the pyramids in Mexico have pools of mercury underneath them. And what's mm -hmm. interesting is I, I bought some mercury and I was testing it out. You put it in front of a voltmeter and you mm -hmm. spin it and it will create voltage. So if you think about the mercury underneath the pyramids, if right. it's spinning, and you have this pyramid on top with this conductive material and then the, um, the gold on top as well, too, and all of that. Then you have one big energy generator. And then there's also the cymatics, which are at play. You know, when mm. people are in there, they talk about the sounds and the frequencies, what they feel, almost like an out-of-body experience because of the resonance or the, the frequency of the material that's being used and the sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because when you look at Les Brown's work, he mm -hmm. talked about how you could put food in a pyramid and you could preserve it indefinitely. Mm -hmm. but then you think, okay, maybe somebody knew how to live to a thousand if they were living in certain shapes, you know, and, and okay. this goes into the work of Dan Davidson and shape power, his whole books on these things. But, you know, shapes all emit a frequency, a fractal, cymatics, whichever word you want to call it. So if you think of these pyramids as these gigantic, you know, basically machines, and mm -hmm. they could preserve the body. They could also charge areas. They could uplift the energy, similar to the old world cathedrals and the bells and all of those yes. things. They're all yeah. energy generators. And I think the more, you know, it's funny because the more you look into it, the more you realize why a lot of people just point your head towards Egypt and Giza and that's it. But yes. there's so many of these. And then you start to sit there and wonder, well, how do they communicate? And this takes it to Philip Callahan's work, where he was talking about like the Celtic round towers, which yes. is really remarkable, that mm -hmm. ropes would go to the top of a Celtic round tower and they would communicate amongst each other because of the materials of the Celtic round tower. And they use them as like cell phone, you know, cell phone, like kind of like communications and right. whatever. So then you think with the pyramids, if somebody knew how to build here, they were obviously communicating with someone else somewhere else. And they would all be able to build the exact same way. But it's, you know, the more you get into all of the things with shapes and pyramids and materials, it gets interesting. And everything, like I said, has a resonance and a frequency and the materials of every single thing that are these things are being built out of mm -hmm. all are very, very specific. That's for sure. Well, they're even saying you can sharpen razor blades. Yes. Yes. Right. That's, that's There's a pattern on that, actually. Oh. And they, they, they would put a, a razor blade in a pyramid and mm -hmm. it would sharpen itself. And it was actually a patent that was done, I believe, in Japan. But they would just keep sharpening them because the alignment of the, if you're going to go into the iron, would right. shift and then it would get rid of all of the dullness. So right. then you sit there and think that's real time. 
You know, this is happening in real time. Like how many things can change in real time? And if we take it a step further, we mm -hmm. go into the Ebner effect, which was a Swiss scientist who right. basically understood that if you took seeds or, or fish eggs and place them into high static fields, mm -hmm. you change them into something you would never imagine, which is like right. kind of going into the giants. So if you think right. about if the energy of the pyramids could mm -hmm. change, let's say the molecular structure of the body or mm -hmm. the molecular structure of food or things like this, then imagine the potential of a human or mm -hmm. whatever animal if it was placed inside this shape with that resonance all the time. Right, right. Um, so in your opinion, I mean, people people say that we can go into alpha state and you can reach like all sorts of crazy frequencies while laying in there. I mean, I had phenomenal experiences in there, but, you know, people were, let me go back to the time of the 70s and you had the whole pyramid movement. People were building these things in their backyards and they were experiencing incredible things through meditation and such. So all of these were aligned. Like, for example, we'll go with the Great Pyramid of Giza because this is one everybody's the most familiar with, even though they're they're literally everywhere. I think so many of them have just been grown over, you know, under forest. Oh, it's a mountain. No. <laughs> right? But um, if you factor all of that in, and it's built and lined up with the the star system, what? Why would they have done that? Is that does that contribute to the frequency somehow? Or because Dolly says, hold on, let me just get. Sorry, Dolly, I don't mean to. I'm just trying to catch up. Um, she says that each pyramid has a different frequency. I didn't know that. That's what they say with the pyramids in Bosnia, that each one is emitting a different frequency. And I believe Samir went and tested all of them. They went with, wow. a, I think it was a biofeedback feedback machine, and he tested all of the frequencies. And each one was emitting, I think, a different sound frequency. So like one was 28 kilohertz. I think the other was like 24. Another one was 20. But yeah, right. like when you think of all of these the, the resonance and the perfection that goes into these things, you know, you sit there and go, okay, somebody understands a lot more than what we think, you know? And it's interesting because like carbon dating, for example, mm -hmm. is as accurate as a PCR test, you know? So we don't really know when right. it comes to like a timeline. Somebody could tell me this was 1 million years ago, but this could have been 200 years ago. You know, I started thinking maybe this is more like a lot of things start at 1831. That seems to be about that date. But, you know, when I find books, they always like stop at like 1831. It's like there's no there's, there's no discoveries, no nothing. It's just all right. of a sudden it's like old wise tales. And it's like nobody was discovering. They were just writing stories. Right. So, you know, I sit there and kind of think, OK, so maybe this, this stuff could be more recent. You know, maybe there was an event. Maybe there was like a static field discharge where everything like flipped. And like things went up and things went down at the same time, water went up, water went down. And then there was this event and then things just kind of, you know, went away. And there were people who survived, but the people who maybe were a part of this, you know, this, um, this creation of such beautiful architecture oh. seems to have all disappeared, you know, because mm -hmm. I look around daily now. I mean, if you see what people build, I mean, it's, it's, it's the most ugliest thing. It's everything's That's in a box, true. you know, there's no shape, there's no architecture, there's no nothing. Right. And it's funny because people, there'll be people who will be like, when I was looking at all the stuff with the world fairs and stuff, they were like, we built that. But it's like, that stuff was already there, you know? Right. And the real question is, who built this stuff? You know, that's, you get into like the elongated skulls people and all the stuff yes. that you know, people who used to be <clears throat> around, you go into like Cro-Magnon and that whole situation, mm -hmm. um, you know, RH negatives, the bloods and all the different stuff with the bloods and everything like that. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Wonder a lot, you know, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm big into like asking questions, you know, like right. look at something that someone told you and whatever it is, even if I'm telling you, just look at it, go back and do some research and see what you think. You know, it's like yes. watching the moon landing. You know, it's it's kind yeah. of <laughs> yes, yes. No, I, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> but no, I cross-reference everything to death, believe me. I I I love learning new things. So it was refreshing when I when I was listening to you and watching you speak about a lot of these things, because 
I've seen and noticed a lot of that. I'm a world traveler. So I love architecture. I love culture. I pay attention to everything. And I mean, you're looking at structures that lasted, but they're still up. I, I stay in places that are from, you know, like the 12th century or, <laughs> you know, or, or 11th century. Like the older, the better. I want to be able to, connect with all of that energy especially like old stone places because stone does you can imprint on it you can you can feel that it can speak it holds voices it's like a recording yep. people don't realize that either you know yeah and everything has a material and a resonance you know i mean i get heavily into stones i've gotten heavily into stones and copper and quartz and gold and silver and lapis and, and lodestones, you know, lodestones are real cool. They got hit by lightning, so they got the magnetic charge, you know. But, I mean, everything has a frequency and everything has a resonance. And we've lost the connections to those things because we've moved to things with DuPont plastic and then a bunch of steel and iron. And that's pretty much it. And like right. you said, everything, you know, back then, everything was built with, with stone, with different yes. types of materials, you know, even stained glass windows, you know, you get into the whole beauty of the stained glass windows and the, the blues and the, the reds and the, all the colors, the alchemy that would go into the windows to create a window. You know, just right. all this. That's the thing. It's like all this beauty that it was right. about creation. Everything was you. Were, they weren't just building something. They were they were creating this just remarkable structure that would touch your soul. You know, right. and now, like I said, in Chicago, you got a bean. You know, you have a little silver bean and that's architecture. So that's, just, that's uh, true. Which it's actually true. I think is mercury, but you know, that's another story. Right. Right. And, I mean, things cost so much to make too. So like, I mean, I'll give credit where credit is due. I suppose we can't recreate some of the things that we've had, you know, way back when, but I mean, I own a lot of old stained glass. Uh, church pieces just because like the church windows and, and such because I do love it for what it is the fact that somebody put all of this together but I love the color spectrums as well <laughs> and I know you speak about that also uh, hopefully you have that on telegram <laughs> Instagram for people to go check out. All of your links are in the show description so people can definitely go and, and check it out um Going back quick to the pyramids, what what is your thought on it? Some people will say, no, they were built as communicators. The Atlanteans built them. They had the help of extraterrestrials. Um, what is your take on that? Because there's a lot of different theories, of course. Well, I think the I think the information is all around us. You know, I think okay. we can tap into this information. It's kind of like right. when people go, I got to download, you know, and right. they're sitting out in nature, and nature right. just tells them, but the information is always there. Um, as for what I think they are, I mean, I think they were energy generators and also communication devices. Right. You know, I mean, when you look at them, I mean, it's just remarkable, the, the detail. And then also, I think they were used for healing. You know, a lot of the times it's interesting, like even Samir was explaining people going into the Bosnian tunnels and they right. were healing. You know, they had all these health ailments. They would walk around the tunnels for, you know, let's say 30 minutes and they would be mm -hmm. healed. And so then you sit there and think, you know, are we supposed to live on like underground? You know, maybe that's kind of something that we don't think about. Like we're up here, you know, right. and maybe our bodies are also meant to be underground. You know, we right. don't think about these things. It's like we just keep building up. You know, we build skyscrapers, nonsense and whatever else, you know, so maybe we should be building, you know, down. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's just something interesting to think about. But yeah, I think mostly like communication, healing, even energy, you know, because there was water underneath them as well. There's all this beautiful, powerful water. And we know that water can create a charge. So, you know, somebody understood the benefits of structured water. And right. these pyramids and these, these, these buildings and these things were all about water. Even if you look at all the world fairs too, water, water, water in every single one. You know, they would yes. craft these like canals and just beauty with water. So right. it's all about, I think, personally, I think it's, it's almost like a, creating something to support mother earth rather than something to harm mother earth. I think that's right. what they were doing. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I, I would agree with that for sure. Um, okay. Well, we'll move along. Cause I could stay on pyramids for a while. I, I just love talking everything 
pyramid. But I did not know about the mercury pools under the pyramids. That's really fascinating. And, you know, I visited a few different places in Egypt and, you know, I've got, I'd love to go to South America, but they've never, they've never had any mummies in there. There was never anything in there at all. So that was interesting to me. You know, they're like, oh, go down over here, go to the queen's chamber. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why don't we just do that? But I'm down for the adventure of crawling way down on my belly. I'll do it. <laughs> so okay. who could say that, you know? Um, I wanted to also touch on, and I can never say this, Dysianin, Dysianin aura goggles. Oh, yeah, the glasses, the, the copper-based glasses. Yeah. Yeah, so those were used to block out the blue and green color spectrum. Yes. And they used a special copper dye to block yeah. out color spectrums. They work like prisms. You know, yeah, every I'm, I'm trying to do this without blinding everybody, just to try to give somebody an idea. Hold on, there. There you go. Hold on. See, does that work? Is that there? This is what you pretty much see. And they're kind of pinky. And these you know, aren't the, like the typical ones. Apparently the people who made these had access to Dr. Um, Walter John Kilner's papers. Yep. And they apparently improved on them. Just received them. I'm one of those like cross-reference so you're dead sort of things. So we're going to find out. <laughs> but yes, they're a thing. So can you talk about, like, do you know about the story when they used them apparently in, was it World War II? Yes, so there was the, the glasses were used. He created those back in the 1920s with Kilmer yes. and his. He was doing stuff with uh, with alchemy and dyes. They were copper based mm -hmm. dyes. Everything's always blue, and that blue always has the copper in it. That's how you always kind of tell it. All always leads back to copper. But right. the uh, the dyes themselves would actually block out the the blue and the green spectrum. So you would see different spectrums, and these work similar to prisms. You know, everybody's glasses that they wear, they're like prisms. You know, they're they're allowing you to see. By a, uh, giving a pr the, the the prism is the, the frequency or the fractal that you're depicting, but those uh, were used to just see different color spectrums and see people's aura. That's what it gets into. If you take prisms, you don't even have. If you don't have those glasses, you can get prisms too. Yeah. Triangle prisms, and you turn them, and you put them right about here, even when the sun is reflecting, or if you're sun gazing or whatever, and you'll start to see all the auras. You'll see the auras of plants. It's almost a purple, a green, uh, kind of like that color with plants. You'll see the aura of, of materials, of stone. Colors will all be kind of distorted and you'll see a different thing. But those little glasses were basically to determine somebody's health. They were able to see kind of like your aura, kind of like Caribbean yes. photography. And you would be able to see the aura, the essence that's coming from the body. And then from that, you would be able to determine how somebody is healthy or not. And right. it's interesting because if you think about it, your aura extends, like it extends through this computer. Your aura right. extends with energy and it's up to about 30 feet. Mm -hmm. So if you could modify the wavelengths in which you can see with the visible light spectrum, then mm -hmm. you would be able to see the aura. Similar right. to when people take mushrooms, you know, and do all of those things too, because they're altering the wavelengths of the eyes so that they can see more spectrums. And it's cool because like even tensor rings, you'll see that they like, you know, kind of like mush the earth if they're sitting on top of something based on changing the color or changing the wavelengths of our eyes. But the Kilner's, the, the glasses is an interesting one. And yes. it's interesting too, because a lot of the people who created a lot of these things in that time frame, 1900s to 1920s ish, a lot of their stuff just disappeared. You know, books disappeared, books mm -hmm. got burned, books got suppressed, you know, like Wilhelm Reich, they burned all his books. Mm -hmm. You know, all these people, they, they, they got rid of a lot of information because this taps us in. This allows right. us to see something in a way in which we cannot see with the visible light spectrum. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, if you could determine, let's say, your health by just seeing your aura or your essence, then you could determine a lot about yourself and you wouldn't right. need the current system that we have. So I think that those glasses go really well with Kirlian photography and just a great thing for people to look into. Right, right. <clears throat> I actually, they piqued my interest because of a story about World War II pilots who were wearing, you know, the original design. Um, I guess they used them as a sort of night vision, which I found very curious because you can't see anything at night with these things. So obviously they must have been tweaked, <laughs> you know, to they be able a, to see. They had an infrared 
that was the red, the one you're thinking of is a, it's a, it was a headset that was a red color spectrum. Yes. And they were seeing all kinds of very scary things. I think it was well, during Vietnam actually, but they yeah. were seeing all kinds of scary things and freaking out. And right. it was because they were picking up on the different color spectrums. And right. I remember they, I think they were saying this was Vietnam because the one guy, I believe he had a Gatling gun and yes. he just started shooting at the air because he was seeing all kinds of things. And that's the thing, like, when you think of color spectrums, you know, we can only see like the rainbow of yes. what we can see. But <clears throat> there's so much more around us. And right. also, too, maybe they spiked their stuff with something, too. You know, you can just, <laughs> yeah. In the 1970s, they had, uh, what was it, Operation Honeypot? You know, mm -hmm. they were doing a lot of spiking and giving people a lot of things during that time. Right, right. Oh, they, yeah, tested those poor people with, with many different things. But you also mentioned the RH negative blood, which I find, I always find very fascinating because it's very talked about now. I mean, back, my parents are both negative blood types. <clears throat> and back then, the I'm aging myself a bit, but back then the doctor was like, how in the world did you two ever find each other with such a small percentage, you know? Sure. And right. So now, of course, back then where there may have been only maybe 7% way back, um, now there's like, what, 13 to 15%. What's your take on that? Where do you think it comes from? This is an interesting one because when you get into it, they talk about blood that can't clot. So when right. something is put into the blood that the blood does not clot, and that's where the whole bleeders came from. A person would cut, get cut, and they would bleed. <clears throat> then you get into blue bloods, you know, the blue hues. And this is an interesting one too because when you look at the, the fish or the, 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 the crabs that have blue bloods, you know, you start to sit there and go, hmm. Okay, I can kind of see maybe where this can kind of go. You have, you know, you have a copper-based blood over here and an iron-based blood over here, and it's yes. interesting because that's red and blue, which is the same color spectrum that makes up everything. Everything's always red and blue, even when you look right. at politics too. It's always red and blue. But you know, with the with the color spectrums, you sit there and go, okay, copper-based, iron-based. Copper is very highly conductive. Mm -hmm. Iron is more magnet magnetic. So you know, you start to sit there and go, interesting. Now. Where did this come from? This is the question that nobody seems to be able to answer with all the testing and science that we have today, that mm -hmm. nobody can track back where this, the blood types came from. What was right. interesting is I found a picture where they showed the negative blood types and they showed the positive blood types and they showed that the negative, it was the, the couple different negative ones all had a bluer blood on the, on the piece of paper that they were using, whereas right. the other ones had a more red hue. So, you know, you start to go, okay, maybe this connects into something that we don't understand because right. that's the thing. We always try to, you know, determine something and they say that the RH positive came from monkeys right. and the RH negative, they don't know where it came from. There's no rhesus factor. There's no, yeah, there's no rhesus. So then you yeah. sit there and go, okay, well then what are you comparing it to? And if you can't mm -hmm. compare it to the rhesus, then what should it be compared to? And that's where I kind of started looking at color and going, okay, if something had blue blood or a blue blue based blood, mm -hmm. what things have that? And it's interesting because it's fish and octopuses and crabs. And then you start to sit there and go, mermaids? You know, fish? <laughs> fish octopuses aren't even from here. They've determined that they're completely alien species. Did you ever, see, the, did you ever see where they turn off the TV? No. They know how to turn off the television. Yeah, there was an octopus sitting like right in a, in a little thing and they had a television next to it. You can look up the video. It's funny. Yeah. But the octopus gets out of the tank, turns off the television and then gets back in the tank. <laughs> I love it. So they know. They're smart. They're like, this is, I don't need Operation Mockingbird or whatever else. But, right. you know, um, it's an interesting thing. And then I kind of think of like you go into the Basque people, you go into the yes. Berbers, you know, you go into all these people. Scotland? Yes, who possess in Scotland, Ireland, Celtic bloodlines, you know, the, the Highlanders and all of them. You, My you bloodlines. <laughs> My bloodlines. That's, yeah, that's all connected into that. And yes. is, is you go into this old, this older bl bloodline, because that's kind of what that goes into. Mm -hmm. And then you sit and wonder, well, then where did those people come from? You know, if, ever, if, there's this, if there's this percentage, where did they come from? Was there another part of this realm we haven't explored or not allowed to go to? Mm -hmm. You know, it just kind of came down from there because that's what they always talk about. You know, right? That, they do. They do. They believe you know, there was some sort of 
you know. Yeah, 30,000 years ago, they estimate some sort of extraterrestrial intervention, <laughs> you okay. know, to, yeah. well, the missing link, where is it? Yeah, and that's, you know, and that's why, like, the, you know, know, when I studying, like, even just getting into the blood type things, I started asking people, what's your blood type? And people were like, I don't know. And I go, how are we roaming around if we don't know what our blood type is? You know, and it's just, it's all these things where you start to, you know, just question and go, well, okay, if I do know it now, then right. where did it come from? And where did these things come from? And and why are there certain, you know, if you go into the, the colors of the eyes, you know, two tone mm -hmm. eyes, you know, certain features, you know, things like walking into a room and turning off electronics, which mm -hmm. is a very interesting one. I mean, I've experienced it. You walk under a light, the light turns off, you know, and it's just like, okay, you know, but then you mm -hmm. sit there and wonder how much voltage is being created from your body. Right. You know, this is where, you know, certain blood types can disrupt mm -hmm. electrical devices. Right. And then you sit there and go, okay, what are you like a super saiyan? You can charge up, you know, but there's monks who have been shown to create fires with their hand. So yes. if you could create a fire with your hand, imagine what your blood can do. And mm -hmm. then you think of this whole donations of blood, plasma, you know, where they're trying to always kind of, you know, do something. Mm -hmm. You sort of wonder, it's, it's, it's almost like the life force energy of the person. And you want right. to now take it out of somebody and then whatever you do with it and whatever. But, you know, it's just, it's a very interesting one when you get into this because it just leads into, you know, six cents and all the like a thousand different rabbit holes of blood right. types, forums and RH negative forums and, you know, all these things and whatever. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, there's so many different um, theories on it. Um, you apparently people who are abductees or contactees, many of them um, are known to be RH negative, not that RH positive people don't, you know, have contact or are not experiencers. But when asking people who have been taken or have had interaction, there is probably 70% that have said that they are RH negative. I'm an experiencer. I was going to say, I think that's interesting too, because I, I was just thinking of how I was reading about how an O negative blood type can also give blood to a dog. Yes. <laughs> and then you get into like, you know, the, the, the canines or canites, you know, that whole right. terminology. But then you kind of sit there and think, you know, man's best friend and that whole term as well, too. And you sit there and think you're connected to the dog. I mean, right. I've had experiences where dogs will just sit down next to me. You know, they just right. sit there. Like, it's just like we are connected. It's, right. it's wild. So then you start to sit there and think, OK, you know, maybe we're part in this dog world or something. And in Egypt, too, you look at like all the, um, the Anubis hieroglyphics and things like that and whatever. And you see, you know, a blue dog man. You know, and then you sit there and go, was somebody connected with these? Was there some <laughs> maybe interbreeding? I don't know. But, you know, then. You How about cryptids? Cryptids, and yeah. Right. 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 That too. And little, you know, yeah. little people and whatever, you know, right. little people and stuff yeah. like that and whatever. So, you know, we have no idea of this whole realm. And that's why I've started to just keep an open mind on everything. Because, right. you know, all the stories of the pharaohs and mummies and whatever else, you know, it, it's just, it, none of it makes sense when. You look at the hieroglyphics and you start seeing completely different things. Mm -hmm. And also with like the dog man or the, the blue blue dog person mm -hmm. in Egypt, you know, then you start to sit there and think, were people walking amongst, you know, dog like people who are human, like right next to you? Like, was there a dog like person? Because certain dogs, too, have a very distinct connection with us. It's it's like humans prefer certain certain dogs if you think about it like even like labradors and whatever there's always like right. certain dogs that are really connected but mm -hmm. you know it's just it's a, it's a really interesting thing when you get into it and like you said even with cryptids and all going that route what used to exist on the realm or the plane is a great question i agree i agree and you you look at depictions of anubis who was you know your god of the underworld he was a, a upright canine type animal half man you know but you there were also in these hieroglyphics there were green the pharaohs were green skinned in some cases as well and you start looking at depictions of crafts and ufos and all kinds of things light bulbs it makes you realize just how 
much things have been kept from us, but it's stuff that's hidden in plain sight. 100%. I mean, it, there's so much of what you just said with the light bulbs. There's, yes. you know, even the Ankh, which is just a power generator, you know, yes. and based on the shape and the, and the, 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 the sacred geometry, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it can create energy. It can also be used as a dousing rod too, <laughs> which I thought was really interesting because everybody used to be going around dousing, finding all the water, gold, silver, gas, oil, right. anything you want to find, you know? Right. So like you said, people were very in tune. You know, it's yes. just as the Rockefellers and the Smithsonian Institute and that whole nonsense kind of took things over, you mm -hmm. know, they started teaching us that people were cave people and they're running around with hammers and mm -hmm. uh, they're building pyramids out of papyrus. You know, they're using like papyrus rope to pull it and whatever, <laughs> you know, just, just silly things. And then you sit there and look at the pictures and go, oh, my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. this is totally different than what I've been told or sold, you know, through, mm -hmm. my, through what I've been learning about. Right. Yeah. Tamara says, um, the ancient Baghdad battery. I actually have a friend that one went missing apparently, but I have a friend who has one in England and it came from a crazy story. Uh, it came from an underwater excavation that they found off the coast of England. He, it was a friend of his, he found all this stuff and he got images back in the seventies. He had to go to the U S military to get images from the satellite, which he paid for, but of course tipped his hand. So men in black showed up, confiscated a lot of the stuff that he had, but thankfully there was stuff he didn't have on site and brought to my friend. And he, he did a show with us. He showed it to us. He goes, here it is. <laughs> it's under lock and key. And he was told by these men in black to never return there again. So what was so special about this place? It's off the coast of England hmm. and it's That's underwater. Cool. That reminds me of the crystal skulls, you know, and right? then the, the, them yeah. finding the crystal skulls in Bermuda around the triangle and then deep in, uh, I, I forget what it's called, but Bisbee or Bismi, whatever it is. But they found all those crystal skulls deep in the ocean, you know, yes. around the Bermuda triangle. And then you sit there and wonder, yeah, who, who created a, a complete skull out of crystal, you know, out of pure quartz and crafted so perfectly. You know, and just it's just wild because there's so much in the ocean, too. You know, you get into I mean, you're going into how much is deep below there that we don't even see, you know, mm -hmm. even the Internet mm -hmm. cables, which run through there, too, which is funny. But right. you know, those, those are deep in there, too. But, you know, you sit there and go, you know, how much is actually below us? Because we're just seeing we're seeing at this level, which has been demoed, TNT, you know, bombed, blown up, whatever it may be, wars mm -hmm. to things and get rid of everything at the surface level but what is also down deep in the ocean you know and it really has made me think about things because after about 1920s nobody's really going deep into the ocean and nobody's really going high up you know up in the sky because you got rid of the blimps and then anybody who was doing stuff into the ocean they probably took the technology so mm -hmm. we're kind of left with this surface but if your friend found, you know, like a battery deep in they the ocean. Were, it was given to him. It was a friend of his who was a diver. So it then, was given to him for safekeeping. He goes, I don't want any of this near me. The whole men in black experience, I guess, was a bit much. I mean, <laughs> I, I could imagine. And But if he found that, whatever depth it was, then you sit there and think, why were there batteries? You know, you're going, I don't know, let's just go a thousand feet just to make it easy. But you're a thousand feet below. When did the water then take, you know, over that area mm -hmm. or that civilization or cover that? Or mm -hmm. why did the water do that? You know, because you mm -hmm. can start asking the why and the what and the when. But like, mm -hmm. when did all these things occur? And then who were those people using that technology? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it gets crazy when you get into this whole thing of, you know, going into places like it's funny, like over here in Scottsdale, they have like a little spot where there's these like massive boulders they're just absolutely right. massive they're stacked on top of each other perfectly right. aligned and they're just they look so out of place there's just right. there's like eight of them that are just massive it's by the seven springs if anybody ever wants to go but there's there's these massive boulders and then if you go to the left of there there's a cute little sign with like some stones thrown in a circle and it says like this is how the people who were living there were you know building houses Right. And you sit there and go, okay, over here doesn't even make any sense because how did the get stacked on top and are still yeah. sitting perfectly aligned? 
But over right. here, it looks like they threw a bunch of, you know, the government threw a bunch of stones in a circle right. and then they're trying to tell me that they were living in huts. And what's wild is it's on top of a mountain too. So right. like you're up there, you sit there and go, well, then how did somebody get here? Similar to your buddy with the battery, right. how did somebody get all the way down there? And at what time frame was that? Right, right. I agree. You look at some of the structures out there and it does not make any sense as to the construction. Some of it is so big that you would have to be, shall we say, maybe a giant to, <laughs> to be oh, able. Yeah. I mean, you got steps that are, you know, ridiculously big. Why would you need that? I or mean, those uh, those old books that you see that are like bigger than, you know, six feet tall. Yes. You know, like books yes. like that. And then you sit yes. there and go, well, why would you have a book that's over six feet tall? Or or even a door that's, you know, I've seen the old world doors. They're, they're yes. 200 feet tall, made out of copper and bronze, which requires a lot of materials and, and a lot of prep time. But yes. then you sit there and think, what were you moving? And right. when I went to India, it was interesting because there was uh, one of my buddies was saying that, you know, they were doing stuff with elephants. But I thought this is absolutely enormous. I was standing next to what looked like this. Uh, it looked like this. Um, it, it was four wheels and it had a little it was all wood and it had a little part where you would sit on top and it looked like it held something very large. And right. I remember sitting there and going, this is like something out of like the 300 movie, you know, when like the Xerxes, Xerxes or whatever yes. comes out and he's yes. just on this massive you know, throne. And then right. you sit there and think, you know, were people gigantic, like, you know, gigantic at this time? Like, when did right. they small? You know, well, if you notice, they even made him appear to be considerably bigger than what he was even, you know, in real life. Like, yep. make, makes you, well, so history tells us maybe he really was. Yeah. Like, real, like, maybe they're, you know, that's part of, you know, they always throw a little bit in there of the truth, yes, you know, yes. but then everything else is all a bunch of nonsense, but yes. you know, they do throw a little bit in there, but yeah. And when I rewatched it, all of the, all the jewels and things that he was wearing, I was like, that's all copper and brass and gold. Funny and, that, you know, you sit there and see interesting, you know, about materials because everybody's wearing them. And then right. you look at like, even the Spartans, they have a bronze shield. Yes, and it's an arrow, which is you know, it's all moving as one. They're moving as right. a unit, like a like a cymatic, you know, just moving through. But right. you, know, you you get into all of this, and you start to see that like, yeah, everything of this connection to these bigger people, and something of like what we haven't been told. And my thing is now because I started kind of getting into fields and like static fields and these things. Is my thinking is when the Rockefeller electricity started to roll out. It's mm -hmm. going to shrink down the people because the fields are dampening our health. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, it would make the people smaller over time. And right. like maybe people get smaller and smaller, the more they're exposed to electricity right. and radio frequencies at the same time, it like shrinks mm -hmm. them because right. a lot of the big people were before 1920s. They got, there's so many pictures of massive people. There are. 1887 electricity rolled up. Right. And then and then you started just getting remnants of these these giants. Well, to me, when the information gets suppressed and the Smithsonian's throwing giant bones into the ocean, you know, there's something they don't want you to see, yeah. you know, then, then you start getting into other parts of the world. I mean, here we have, you know, giants that, you know, they, they basically said, oh, you know, they were like, we've seen people in our lifetime that are eight feet tall you know, seven feet tall. I had friends who were like, like six, seven, for God's sake. So another foot wasn't a far stretch in, in, in some communities or cultures. Um, Aruba had all kinds of, of giants, you know, um, I mean, they're out there, but you go out to places like Sardinia in Italy and they were said to be like 15 feet tall. Yep. <laughs> That's a With pretty the, big, big teeth. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. So I don't know. See, Dolly says her nephew's seven foot two. There you go. <laughs> you know, because it's a big guy. But I don't know. I, I, I think when you are starting to suppress information, you have to ask yourself, why? Why are they suppressing it? I mean, control? Okay. And then we can get into a whole other show, you know, pineal gland and all kinds of sort of stuff. But I mean, this is stuff that ancient cultures all knew about. 
and they emulated what they saw. You go around to sit and think that ancient cultures weren't connected with extraterrestrials would be utterly ridiculous. Go and look at the structures, the monuments, the hieroglyphs, petroglyphs, you name it, it's all there. To say, oh, they didn't exist. Well, I call BS <laughs> on that one, right? So well, I think that's to keep us in a certain frequency or bandwidth. <laughs> You know, that you believe that you came from monkeys. And then after you came from monkeys, you walked around with hammers. And then mm -hmm. you just started hitting things with hammers. And that's how yeah. you designed everything. You know, and right. it was funny because I went to a museum and they had like hammers from uh, 1700s. You know, mm -hmm. and I sat there and thought, okay, that's what you use to build those beautiful, absolutely stunning monuments that are so pinpoint. And, and very precise. Oh, it's insane. When, it, when I went to India... The, the, the totems, you know, the, the poles, the, yes. the, every, the parts of the, the, the buildings were so detailed. It looked like somebody took like a 3D printer and just, you know, copy and paste it perfectly upside right. down every direction. You know, right. and then you start to sit there and think with well, somebody using sound frequency, you know, they right. hit a tune <laughs> and then that yes. just craft the earth. But it's, I think personally, like we were going back to the, you know, why don't they talk about the giants? I think it's just to keep us in the caveman, you know, monkey business, mm -hmm. whatever. And mm -hmm. that's what they think of us, you know, so they're trying to keep that. And like you just said with the Smithsonian thing, why would you be throwing away relics? Shouldn't we be learning about things like that? Like those are antiques. And then you're exactly. picking and choosing, which goes into the trusting your science situation. Right. You're choosing <laughs> what part, of the, you know, the science you want to show us. Right. But then you leave out all this. And right. that's where I think that leads to so much confusion. And then people, you know, kind of regress and go back to, like I said, the, the caveman monkey thing. But it's we're much more right. than that. That's for sure. Well, let, let's face it. With technology now, um, you know, you have you have drones, you have LIDAR, you have all kinds of things that can go over areas and penetrate you know, ground penetrating radar, you can find this stuff now. The technology is there. And of course, we have these wonderful things called, you know, cell phones that have built in cameras and recorders and they're mini computers. I mean, my phone has bigger hard drive than my computer does. It's ridiculous. But with that being said, now, um, people are going out there and they are seeing things, they're capturing things, and they're sharing it all over the world. So it's not as easy to hide. And can we even talk about what the Vatican has? Oh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> and, and what's funny is the, the Vatican buildings look exactly like San Francisco in 1899. You know, you look oh. at, yeah, if you go back into San Francisco, 1899, and you look at the pictures, you'll see that it looks exactly like the Vatican. So the same, somehow somebody was over there building the exact same thing that they were building in one place. You know, and then you go maybe to another place like Japan and you see right. the exact same thing, you know, before World War II. Mm -hmm. So you start to see, you know, these same things everywhere. And right. yes, imagine how much is hidden underground, you know, because that's right. another thing in the vaults yeah. and the libraries and all of the stuff that's hidden from us. I mean, that's the thing. We, we don't even know. We, we, us, all of our research, like you said, it's all a collective research and everybody pu pulling information together. We're mm -hmm. just putting together you know, tidbits or small amount of information. There's mm -hmm. so much more. And I think just inevitably humanity will only continue to keep, you know, seeing more and mm -hmm. more. And that's why they're so adamant about trying to ban the internet and put up like IDs for you to sign on to the internet and things like that, because they realize that people are waking up. And I mean, even us having this mm -hmm. conversation right now, there's millions of people thinking like this. It's not just me and you today. No. Every single day I get more and more messages of people going, that makes sense. You know, I just never really thought about it that way. And right. only going to continue. And that's why I always say there's there's two ways this path is going. One is this, you know, awakened and people are, are you know, seeing something different and start becoming self-sufficient and independent. Mm -hmm. And then there's another side which still goes, you know, with the caveman and the monkeys and whatever. And I right. think we'll just kind of keep going at that. But 2020 was the catalyst towards this, you know, change like that. Right, right. I think <laughs> I think when you're you're getting into the, the grand scheme of, of things and suppression, there's it's a cycle that just keeps going on and on. Every hundred years things change. I think that 
some people will tell you, I will switch gears a bit. Some people will tell you that Raza was a game changer for a lot of things when it comes to, and I just, I want to get into Ron's comment um, about things changing, the narrative changing, at least for the United States about we'll move to UFOs because most of the world has disclosed, right? And even Russia, Russia was one of the first countries to disclose what their pilots were seeing. France has always had a program that encouraged its citizens to come forward and share information. Brazil and Peru, same thing. They would talk about it. It would go on to the news. You know, Canada, you know, we had uh, the defense minister, Paul Hillier, come out and say, yes, there's all these extraterrestrials. Yes, we know about them. Then we have the United States who just don't want to talk about it. And they say, well, come Roswell, things change. But you're saying something a little bit different when it comes to reverse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 when, when it comes to the whole Roswell thing, I see it as three-letter agencies. You know, right. I see it as, as, you know, Victor Schauberger created the first flying saucer. This was during World War II. And right. what happened was, was Victor Schauberger, uh, after the war, was brought over here. They took his technology. They took his patents. They took all of his information. Mm -hmm. And while he was here, he said, so what do you want me here for? And they said, well, we don't really need you. They sent him back. And then he passed away shortly right after that. You know how this one always goes. Right. And r right about, eh, it was about 12 years, 13 years later, which about 15 years, the Roswell incident occurred. And it was interesting because he created the motor that could spin and create a flying saucer. So right. you know, when we get into the flying saucers and this whole thing that we, you know, we see, I've started to realize it's our, it's our own people. It's our own right. technology. Like we, we have the technology. Mm -hmm. And then if we take it back a little farther, we go back to war of the worlds when they yes. did a radio broadcast. This was uh, I forget what his, the author was, but he wrote a book and they then did a radio broadcast to see what would happen if right. people heard that aliens were invading. People started freaking out. They started going nuts. You know, people started shooting people, getting all kinds of craziness because they actually thought that they were being invaded. So right. if, we, if we take it, you know, I, go, I like to take it in timelines and, 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 and different things. But if we take it and we break it down, we start to see, OK, you, you kind of built the people up in the 1900s to the 1940s. Mm -hmm. Then you get the technology and then now you kind of, you know, do like a soft disclosure. You got all the soft disclosures and then you start doing it to the people and you start flying things around. So people start getting scared. Then you try to do Project Bluebeam where you'll probably try to stage an alien invasion 2024, <laughs> 2025, you know, around election mm -hmm. time, always around that time. So, you know, you'll you'll try to stage something and then it'll come with like we all need to band together in one world. And we'll probably, you know, have to get together because if not, there'll be an alien tax or an alien illness. And that's kind of my thing on it. You right. know, there is beautiful technology that so yes. many people have created. I think there's so much more that we have no clue. Like you right. get into bells and all the, you know, the different things that were created with bells and things mm -hmm. like that. But yes. I kind of look at it more that it's a three letter agency that's been pulling the same strings for so long. Yes. And they just do it in different ways and they learn what people are paying attention to, you know, right. and when I used to even look into like, you know, Gaia and all of these different broadcasts that would come out here, you look at the top, you know, investors, BlackRock and Vanguard, right. and then you start to see, oh, that also kind of pairs together with other things. And you right. start, so I kind of, this is my take on it, at right. least how I see it, but it's just, uh, yeah, I kind of see it in just a different way because it's been that way for a long period of time and I wouldn't see it any differently on that situation. Right, right. I agree. I, I think we're definitely into um, a time where we can start looking at Project Blue Beam. Let's, let's talk about the Miami sighting. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Want to do that? Yeah. Yeah, there was a sighting. You know, they, they sent out, um, I think it was 75 police cars. It was ridiculous. Yeah. They sent out <laughs> right. 75 police cars for, yeah. they were alleged, you know, some 12-year-olds playing in the mall. Right. It said. Right. And they sent out 75 police cars. You right. know, so then I sat there and thought, okay, maybe they're going to try to do some hologram, you know, invasion or something or mm. 
whatever. Like they're going to try to stage something because my whole thing is people aren't believing any of the nonsense anymore. You know, like right. as soon as something happens, people are like, no way, <laughs> you know, whatever. This right. Stuff right. Like yeah, the, we're over like, it. We're over it. <laughs> <and> <laughs> right. Things like that and whatever else. <laughs> and funny things. So, you know, I think that it's just, this is opening up the eyes, but they're trying to cue it, you know, because during that they had a lot of people who did, I think interviews and they were mm -hmm. saying they were seeing these tall gray figures and I was like, oh, yeah. that sounds exactly like us talking to the grays in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. And then you get into like Project Philadelphia, the, the Monarch, uh, Mont uh, Montauk experiment. Montauk, yeah, and, and the Philadelphia Project, yeah. Yeah, so you get into all that and go, right. okay. And if you do it in a certain, you know, timeline, then you mm -hmm. can say that aliens are coming. And because if you look at that, I, I believe it's like that card game. They have mm -hmm. an alien invasion on that card game. It's like the Illuminati card game or something. So right, right. They have that. Me, pay attention to these. I've started to realize that it's the same cycle every three months. You know, every three months, it's kind of like the same type of thing that they're going to try to pull. And that's why I've learned to just, I mean, they're going to keep trying right. to do nonsense, but I'm going to be sitting over here in nature. You know, that's what I've started to realize because it's just, they will keep trying to keep us consumed with a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And there is beautiful technology. That's absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous that I'm sure that we have no idea what exists, but right. I don't truly believe, you know, there's grays or things coming to give it to us. I think that it's, we've already created it because the more I go back into these books, all of the technology we have today, like mm -hmm. 2024 was created in 1901 and 1902. So right. then you start there and think, well, then nothing's really new. You know, we had, they had phones back then too that plugged into the earth. So right. You know, it's it's just yeah. You can take it a billion ways with that one, right? I th I think so as well. I mean, I could see them being really jumpy in Miami because they did have, you know, an incident where there were fireworks and people died. You know, so they're going to take that seriously. But that's a whole lot of cars, <laughs> you know, for for you know a few twelve year olds. But I think we'll start seeing more of that. I am also very interested in your take on crop circles while we're on the topic. So crop circles are an interesting one. And it, it yeah. reminds me of Mother Earth speaking to us. And okay. I say this because a lot of the videos that have came out with crop circles, they show plasma orbs spinning and then creating a design onto the earth. And the most fascinating thing when I've gone down these rabbit holes of crop circles is the fact that they are created on the beaches and there's no footprints. And it was interesting because the UK, this was really funny, the UK was trying to say like there was a guy out there with a rake and he was right. making crops. Because they got a lot out there. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is, and there's a lot in that one specific area. But it's funny because the guy is raking on the video and he's like destroying the crop circle. You can see like he's he doesn't right. even know what he's doing. But what I believe crop circles are actually Mother Earth communicating between us. Okay. And it's interesting. There was a fellow who took crop circles and instead of them being flat. He turned them uh, upright and he started spinning them. And he noticed that when he would spin them, they would look like energy generators. And so based on the spin of when he spun it really fast and took the design and kind of shifted it and everything else, it looked like energy generators. And so I think personally, when you get into these crop circles, they're all in certain places. You know, they're high energy spots. The, there's a lot of plants that are very unique that grow mm -hmm. in that area too, that start growing from the crop circle. Mary Hardy talked about doing uh, meditations in the mm -hmm. crop circle with her pyramid power and everything she talked about. Mm -hmm. But through crop circles, I see it as cymatics of the earth communicating between us. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's where I get into like talking to plants, you know, talking to bees, to, to birds, to all of these things. We have that connection. Right. And we just have lost that over time because it's all become considered woo-woo, or sorcery or pseudoscience, you know, talking about these terms. But, you know, when you get into crop circles, they're, I think they're one of the coolest things. And mm -hmm. the whole reason I got into them was I did an Akashic reading back in 2019. And the lady I was talking to, great soul, she told me to look into crop circles and she goes, you'll just know what to do with them. And I was like, okay, you know, sure. So started doing a lot of research and it led me into the electroculture path and the, you know, gigantic food and all of those things. But it's all just energy. And if you think about it, you know, if you took a crop circle, maybe turned it into a necklace, place it onto your body, 
Now you're going to have that frequency on your body and your cells and the water in your body. And it can help right. you heal too. And right. I think it's a language. You know, me and you right now are we're speaking English, but yes. cymatics is a language. You know, right. it's, 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 so if we think of crop circles, I think of it as a language communicating. We probably don't know what it's saying, but right. it's a beautiful language. And I think the more we kind of connect into that and understanding that, the more it leads to in all the other topics we talked about today. Right. I believe everything comes full circle. What, what I found interesting was, you know, years ago when the government put out a message to ET, they just sent it out on this disc and it was, it was an ongoing message. And I think it was like 18 months or maybe a couple of years later where in a, a form of a crop circle, you know, but not circle, but it was just, you know, like a rectangle. It was a reply oh, yeah. to that yes. message. And it was, it was a, the head of a gray. Yep. And then it had all of this crazy, you know, symbols on it. Um, and when they deciphered it, or most of it, whatever they could, it was a response to the message they had sent. So they were wondering, like, is it because, is there, you know, time and space, you know, are they so far that it took that long to reach them? Like, there was all kinds of things that that came out with that, which I thought, that's very interesting. But there's also a belief, which lends to your theory, that they're actually already here. If you look at the Hopi, they, they always said they're big-eyed friends who lived underground. Yep. And when disaster came, they brought their ancestors underground. So now we're getting back to the underground thing, which you know makes a lot of sense. Again, when you're looking at ancient cultures all over the world that were underground. Look at Gobekli Tepe. Oh, yes. a huge labyrinth under there. There's, you know, Romania, they just found like a, a, another ancient library in Romania underground. Like everything always seems to be under. So we come full circle a little bit on that as well with what we were talking about. So I don't know. I find it fascinating that you have underground tunnels and underground um, cave systems that people were residing in you know, all over the world for thousands of years. And here we are above ground yeah. and look how that's going for us. <laughs> so, well, and I, I like, I like how you said that because then you start to sit there and think who, who, who dug all of that or who built that <laughs> out, you know? And it was funny because I was talking to a friend in the UK, her name's Philly. And she was telling me about how there was a town called like the new town in the UK and then when they dug seven stories down, they found another town and it was called the old town. So then you oh, sit there and think, well, then how'd you even get, when, when did that happen? How did you get all the way down there? And also, you know, if we go back into the hammers and the pits <laughs> and all of that, you'd be saying, like, you're, you're born, you know, you're popped out the womb with a pick in your hand. Just That's pretty much how long it would take you. <laughs> yeah. You know, by the time you hit 30, when you allegedly don't, you know, live past 30. Right. Anymore. So then you're right. already gone. And so that's the thing that like, that's the part that none of that makes sense. And also, you know, digging like that, you know, how are they going? That How are they, how are they getting into the earth? You know, were they using sound? Were they using water? Were they using light? You know, mm -hmm. was there some sort of technology? Because, even if you look at the, the Bosnian tunnels and how when Samir was going through them, he was saying, which I thought was really interesting, that someone has gone back into the tunnels and blocked them. So then you sit there and think, oh, OK, no. someone went back into the tunnels, started blocking them. Who did that now? What time frame and why? You know, and right. then if they blocked them, are they in there? Because I've and this is my whole thought on the whole Bosnian pyramid. Is that like one day Samir is going to go in there and see stuff that's just going to, you know, like change the world type of thing. But I think that that's why they will not invest a single dollar into that because mm -hmm. of what can be discovered when he actually gets in there to mm -hmm. see something that would connect the dots with all of the questions we're saying and all the layers, you know, because like even Giza, they say it's seven floors below. It's you know, really I'm, far down. Yeah, so and nobody's allowed to go down there anymore. So it's like, well, why not? I like, went down one level. I was allowed to. Yeah, now because so now, I'm a very good tipper, Matt. 
<laughs> let, let me go down a level. Give them a fat tip and say that I'd like to go to you know floor level seven or whatever. I know, won't it cost me? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but but you know what? It's true. There is so much down there. I mean, there have been mines discovered that go back like three hundred million years ago. Like we know we're not the first kick at the can on this planet, you know. We're probably Lord knows how many, but there are traces of. I mean, you know, it was a uranium mine that was found. They figured it was at least three hundred and fifty plus million years ago. And how about all those out of place artifacts that are showing up that are like completely unexplainable and dated to be so old, hundreds of thousands of years ago, if anything. So I mean. God, it feels so primitive, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but speaking of that, let's talk about the 13 month calendar. So, this is an interesting one. You know, people can go on to Google and just type in 13 month calendar, and you'll see the Kodak. I think it's the Kodak, the Kodak film, but they had a 13 month calendar that they actually used to work with. Like all of their workers would work on the 13 month calendar. And right. it's interesting because you think, well, 13, you know, that doesn't seem like a, a number that you would think of. But if you look at a turtle shell, you see 13 little squares on the turtle shell. And right. that's what people used to follow. Now, why would they change the calendar? Because people go, oh, my gosh, like now, now the calendar has changed and whatever. Because what it does is it throws off the rhythm of the body. You know, all of this stuff is throwing off the rhythm of how our, our, our body naturally works. If we believe there's 12 months instead of 13 months, now there's always like an extra month and then or a, one less month. And then when we go through the seasons, which I think are created, but that's another story. Well, but when we time is those, created. Yeah. When right. those, when we go through this, the seasons, then, you know, you go into thinking, okay, well, if I, if I change the timeline, I won't understand what's actually going on. And right. I think the 13 month calendar, when they changed all of that was to try to just throw us off, you know, because you look at, I think it's like before the 1930s, 13 month calendar was very popular. Then after 1930s, you know, the 13 month calendar goes away and you see this every single time, you know, you see this drastic change when we go from, you know, like hemp to DuPont plastic, you know, right. or a, 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 thir a 13 month calendar to a 12 month calendar, you know, like different changes or, you know, maybe the starting of the year, they say around April 1st rather mm -hmm. than January 1st, you know, all these changes that have occurred, which mm -hmm. have thrown off our rhythm. And then once right. our rhythm is thrown off, we don't know what date we're in. And even today, you know, because this gets into the Gregorian calendar, we don't even know what day or year it actually is because the Gregorian sure. calendar is like 1000 years past what the date is you know, supposed to be or whatever else. So right. now, well, what year am I in? You know, if I say I'm in 2024, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, we got technology that still gets 20 miles to the gallon. So right. maybe we're in the 1500s. <laughs> yeah, maybe you may. Real maybe horsepower. <laughs> 761 right. and we've right. just been reset so many times so right. then it looks like we're like starting all over and then we're the cave people and all that other stuff but in reality it's just been so many the like, different resets and it's interesting because when you get into the calendars it then starts to make you think about you know moon cycles and the starting of the year and just all these different things that all have been flipped and that's why i've said i've started to learn to just keep an open mind because so many things don't make sense for what I was taught and then now seeing right. it. Right. right. But you ask, you ask an interesting question and ch guys just chime in. Um, if, if you're, if you want to chime in, where did that other month go? That's a good did question it, because you know, they have a, there, there used to be a soul month, which okay. is interesting. You know, the month of the sun, Yes. And that was usually between June and July. That's a very high energy time because you have the uh, summer solstice around that time too. Right. So, you know, very high peak energy. And so, you know, I think that they eliminated that one because it kind of disconnects us from the sun. You know, they're always like, the sun is bad for you and stay away. Right. It's dangerous, the nonsense. It only gives us life and keeps everything alive. But <laughs> it, it was the, uh, the mm. disconnect that occurred from us connecting to the sun and celebrating the sun because like during the summertime everybody's got high energy good moods everybody feels good they feel healthy you know right. they're out hiking doing you know things in nature it's all beautiful times so right. you know you sit there and think well maybe it was that time or they say that there was another month 
in between, I believe it was October and November. And then that was another time in which the 13th month was supposed to be there. I think it's called like Osiphus or Osiphus, something like that. It's another Zodiac sign that they say, but you know, you sit there and go, maybe it was then, you know, I mean, I, I kind of sit there and think, I kind of just connect more to the nature and the sun. But right. you know, at this point, I don't know. I just know. What if there was another Zodiac? What'd you we say? Have 12, we have 12 symbols of the Zodiac. What if there was a 13th? Yeah. You know, if you look at, you know, let's just look at even religion. The number 13 is pretty significant. When you look at the 12 disciples, you look at, you know, the Christ figure, you have, you know, 13, there's 13 12 to 13 of everything. A lot of cultures find this to be very important. And to have, you know, this month just disappear, you know, maybe there was quite a significance to it because everything was 13. Not an unlucky number of people just saying, you know. Well, they, they invert that. That's another one. They always invert everything. Everything right. that's good for you, they tell you it's dangerous and you should stay away from it. You know, and right. I, I've I've learned that with especially even numbers and anything, even the sun, even the eclipse. You know, they tell you not to look at the eclipse. I watched the eclipse for 20 minutes. It was the most wildest out of body experience I could ever explain. It was like <laughs> funny and dark at the same time and just the most intense download, I, I, the best way to describe it. But, right. you know, a lot of stuff is just, yeah, inverted and it, it, it works over time, you know, because you could also say, well, if you had 13 months, you know, and they switched to 12, what's the big deal? Well, if you times that by 12, you know, 12 years, you've now lost a whole year. Like the whole timeline has been completely messed it's up. It's changing. Yeah. yeah. So that's it why is. it's so important for us to know or at least have an idea, you know, of what used to be, because then we can start to connect and it resonates more with our soul. You feel the intention, like you feel that and go, that makes more sense, you know. Mm -hmm. the, Mommy. Well, considering you have some months that are longer, and then February, which is shorter, I and mean, what's up with like having a leap year? That's tomorrow. We, have know. Months, we get an honorary day, you know. We get to celebrate. I know. It's this day and, that randomly shows up. Yeah, well, it's a special day. They get, they, you know, we, we were given one extra day now. Now we, we get to celebrate that. But see, the, and that's the thing. It's like you're just picking and choosing. It's kind of like daylight savings time. You know, that whole thing. And they change things over and they go, oh, well, now you got one less hour of the sunshine. And it's like, oh, well, why? In Arizona. Keep us working. Keep you know, us working. Well, I was yeah. going to say in Arizona, we don't even have daylight savings time. So it's like, and everything's still places cool. don't have it. Yeah. I know. So, they're eliminating it. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, so it's all of these things to mess with our circadian rhythm, the, right. you know, our ability to pay attention, to focus to be in tune, mm. you know, that, that's the, that's the thing I've realized. It's just, it's like mass confusion, which I think is MK ultra, but mass confusion to make people so confused that they don't understand. And then they just kind of like, eh, whatever. But for mm -hmm. me, it's just been learning all these things and going through these books and collecting books and going through this. Mm -hmm. It's just really opened my eyes to our true potential of like right. humanity. And instead of our, Kind of like us giving our power to somebody else and saying, you know, they can create it for me or I can obtain it from somebody. We can do right. it ourselves, you know, and right. it, it kind of takes me that route and connecting back to our roots, which right. go very, very deep. Right. Do you find, um, I mean, all we have to do is go back and look at oral history, talk to our indigenous people, um, you know, wherever, wherever, any part of the world that you're at, you know, talk to you. You're indigenous. They they have their oral history, and it was quite different. Like they 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 used to just go through the cycles. You know your solstices. There was no time. Time is just an invented, man-made, invented thing. Um, ancient people didn't use time, right? So, so let's let's talk about uh, that a little bit because you live out in Arizona and a lot of parts of the United States have a lot of ancient structures that could be considered, you know, for, let's say, Sedona, for instance. You know, I had Deborah Thunderbeat on, and she does a whole tour and wrote a whole book about Egypt and Sedona. And she showed structures and photographs 
that darn if they don't look like Egyptian statues, of, like of the Sphinx or of the goddess Isis. It's very compelling. And then you hear about the Grand Canyon where all of a sudden there is a section roped off that you can't go into because of a conspiracy of Egyptian artifacts that have been found and, you know, hieroglyphs and stuff. Well, I, I like how you, uh, you said that, you know, as the conspiracy, because it's like, well, if it is that way, why can't we make the decision? You know, why can't we see these things and then make the decision on how we feel? You know, right. why, why are these things hidden from us? And, Sedona is wild. You know, Sedona is, a, is it's like a it's like a polar vortex. You have positive and negative happening at the same time. And then <laughs> yeah. you have all that sandstone. So it is super, super, super highly energetic. Like as soon as you get in there, you just you feel it. You're like sunken in and you're just like into the earth. Like it's 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 almost kind of hard to explain. No, but I understand. <laughs> the most yeah. interesting things about certain spots is some spots are so like positive and uplifting. And then some spots, spots are so dark and like pulling you down. Like I remember we went hiking and we went through a place that was called like Dead Man's Path. And right. I remember I literally felt like dead people were underneath me while I was walking that path. And I thought, it's kind of weird that you picked this name. Then we right. went to another spot called Devil's Bridge. And it felt like all these people had fallen off this bridge. And it was a very steep, strange energy spot. And it looked like a portal. Too. It right. was like what was left over of a portal. So then you start to sit there and think, you know, did that whole Stargates movie we saw, you know, in 2000s, whatever. Right. Were there Stargates or some sort of portal that could go through something in different times or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. things that our mind can't even comprehend. But mm -hmm. then you go to other spots of the Sedona and it's just you feel just relaxed and, and like ultra healed. So, right. you know, you sit there and go, this is all within... I don't know how many miles Sedona is, but you know, you're, you're all within this certain region. And right. it's interesting too, because when I went to Sedona, when you first enter in, there's all these like old world Spanish buildings. There's like a little shop and all these crystal stores in these old world buildings. And then you sit there and think who built this? You know, they're, they're understanding that they're building on water. Now they're actually demoing a lot of it and like getting rid of the bridges and things like that. Right. But you know, there, there's all these old world buildings. And then, like you said, all this connection to Egypt. And yes. if people in Egypt were, let's say, building over here, then how did they get here? You know, did they did they come across on wooden boats? You know, like we've been told and whatever else, you know, they're cute little wooden boats and they sailed across the right. Atlantic, whatever. Rough waters. Of, yeah. What was it? Was Rough just, waters. Yeah. They, <laughs> just, they, they, they swam yeah. across. You know, they did it with right. little wooden <laughs> sticks. You know, right. so, you know, you sit there and go, a lot of that doesn't make any sense. And then you go into the Grand Canyon. And like you said, with the Hopi tribe and all of the things connected into that. And then you start to see that, like, people are building into the Grand Canyon. And then you start to go, well, how were you doing? Were you hanging from, the, you know, with, with a rope and yeah. then trying to dig into the canyon? And yeah. it's interesting because just south of Sedona is a place called Rimrock. In Rimrock has a primary water well, a well of water that never runs out because we're never wow. running out of water. That's another myth on the topic right. of things we could talk about. But Rimrock is a very powerful spot if you go to it. The water is crystal blue. Like it's wow. coming out of the earth, just so pristine. You know, right. so I almost look at Sedona, Rimrock, Grand Canyon, the Flagstaff, and then part of Clarksdale and all of that. That all looks like something of a volcano. I think there's two volcanoes over there right. and something just went and then just carved it all out. But right. somehow also at the same time, like you said, somebody was building like Egypt and doing all of these things at the same time, you know, right. which doesn't really add up to the narrative of like, it was founded and founded in 1981 right. or whatever else, or 1899, whatever the date was. Right. Well, let's face it. We know that, we had people from overseas coming in. The Vikings have been said to be there as early as, you know, the 800s. Um, I know we have had Dr. Kathleen Ambal on the show. She's got evidence of Knights Templar, for example, mm -hmm. in Brazil around 1250, which kind of predates a certain somebody who was supposed to have come over. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Yeah. Little boats, you know? Just say it. Yeah. Well, okay. That guy. So, <laughs> you know, um, 
But there's also theories from other guests that have been on who've researched this that Atlantis wasn't just one island, which they now believe in to be in the Azores, but that it was everywhere. And that, of course, Egypt was connected to them, to the ancient technology, you know, um, all of these ancient, the ancient Sumerians. I mean, you can get into a whole rabbit hole of it, but if that's the case, it would sure explain the travel because Atlantis allegedly had all kinds of technology to be able to travel by maybe air. <laughs> you know, it's just, well, I I love going down the rabbit holes because they're they're fun. As as hypothetical as they can be, there's a lot of information that's starting to surface. A lot of these cultures, I believe, did have connections to superior, you know, or other individuals who had, you know, whether they're already here, because a lot of people believe that they're actually in our oceans, that they're underground, you know, if, especially if you start getting into things like inner earth. Oh, yeah. There's there's cave systems with entire ecosystems down there. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in Thailand, they have like, I think it's the one of the biggest, you know, people can look that one up. It's the largest cave that also has like the earth inside of it. And it's just absolutely See? stunning you know so then yes and where does that lead us and like you were saying too with the atlantis thing you know do you think of blimps and zeppelins and people yes. flying around in the air yes. you know when we look at a lot of the uh old world photos of the buildings mm -hmm. the, the the skies are always whited out you know they always have a, it's completely whited out there's nothing flying around but it was interesting because i had a, a friend send me some photos from russia around the 1880s and there's all these blimps flying around so wow. you know, just to sit there and think okay maybe they didn't move by water like right. cute little boats you know christopher columbus maybe they went by air and then right. this kind of changes almost everything because right. then you sit there and think okay if they understood helium and hydrogen then what else were they doing at that time because they already understood all of that rather than you know sitting around on rowboats and whatever else you know i'll, I'll take it a step further and i don't know if you've ever heard about these but um there's a, a whole other show that I do with with my producer and and friend uh, Joe Montaldo, who owns the network that we're on, and it's an information sort of show. And I started researching. It was about 24 hours a week of just research. Have you ever heard of these old wooden sky ships that look like you saw it, like in the Mummy? <laughs> the Mummy. It's, it's a freaking ship, sails, balloons, right? Oh, yeah, and they're, yeah. they're just going everywhere. Do you know that there are accounts going back anywhere from the 13 to the 1500s? One was in this, this little old town, and in front of the church, they had men in, like, uniform dropping down from what they described to be, they called them airships, but they were described as what we would call a pirate ship, for example, or a galleon. Mm -hmm. And they would come down on ropes and they would anchor. They anchored to these church doors. And, of course, the people went out of control because they were anchoring on to this the door of their church. And they cut the lines and the guy scaled right back up and took off. And this was an account that they went on to write about. And there are all kinds of stories about this. That reminds me of the stories where the mountains on top of mount, certain mountaintops, they have like boat anchors. And then you start to sit there and think, why on earth would you have a boat anchor on the top of right. a mountain? You know, at wow. whatever, whatever feet. But right. see, and then that completely changes the whole story, you know, that we were told. And I think, too, like even oh, no. when you get to the medieval times right. and people running around with armor on, you know, I mean, then you start to sit there and think, okay, the armor weighs let's say 100 pounds, let's say 200 pounds, let's say 300 right. pounds, depending. Some of the right. stuff was pretty heavy that I saw in the castles and whatever else. Yeah. Then you sit there and think, well, how are they moving? You know, because, I mean, I used to be in the fitness world. I watched people do 1,000-pound deadlifts, 1,000-pound squats. I've, I've seen it all. But that's one time. You know, that's not like running around mm -hmm. with the weight. So, you know, you start yeah. to sit there and think, did somebody know how to tap into static fields in which they could levitate? You know, that's that's kind of where I start to think mm -hmm. the medieval times was levitating yes. and the ability to fly or float, you know, right. and if someone could do that, well, you can't put a tax on that, you know, so that we can't learn about that. Right. And then with, the, with the airships, like you were saying, you know, that allows people freedom. When I got into the Hindenburg, Hinden, Hindenburg incident mm -hmm. and 
one incident that removed all blimps from the air, you know, you start to sit there and think, wow, people flew on blimps and flew 1 million miles around the earth before the Hindenburg incident. Right, and there were right. no accidents. People could, they could drink at a bar. There was right. a library in the blimp. There was like right. a, literally a dance floor. I mean, it was crazy right. what you could do in a blimp. So right. you sit there and go, if you could fly around, that would make sense how they got those 1,400, 1,500, and 1,600 maps. You know, because you're right. in this aerial view, and then you right. can just draw it out. Rather than if you're down on the ground, like me and you right now, right. it's a little hard to determine what's all going around around us. That's on right. Like a little boat, you know, or something else like that. It's true. And especially if you factor in, like, how old some of these maps are. You yes. know, they're, they're fascinating. But I'll tell you a quick story. My mother, for you know, before she passed, would always say to me, I keep hearing something, and it's always at this time, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, all right, she's a little elderly. So I'm just going to let it go, and I'm going to humor her. <laughs> so I said, well, why don't you just record it for me? Because I cannot, for the life of me, figure out what the heck you are trying to tell me. She says, it's just strange. I've never heard it before. But this went on for months. So she took her iPad one time and recorded this sound and sent it to me. So I'm listening to it. I said, I said, when you record it, you can't say anything. I know I'm going to hear a passing car here or there, but don't talk. Don't do anything. Don't have the TV on. She did it. It was very still. And what I heard sounded like ropes, you know, on like rigging on an old sailing ship. Oh, wow. And this came from a corner of the house. She lived in a valley. Maybe it's a residual thing. Lived in a valley, which was a small lake. But at one time, you know, it was hit by an asteroid. It was all underwater, all this crazy stuff. But you could hear this thing twisting. And it's like rope twisting against wood. And I'm just like, holy crap. This is a dimensional thing. But it was interesting because, you know, she was hearing it regularly but only really late at night at around maybe between 10 and 11 at night and she could hear this just normally and she was just coming from the corner of the house you know the foundation like it's impossible it's impossible <laughs> my logical brain won't let me go there but yeah. yet you know I, I work in a field of high strangeness so i have to keep an open mind but i thought that was really interesting and to capture that on recording was really really interesting huh I mean, it's good. I mean, you can get into so many things, but it is crazy what is totally possible and what it's could possible. exist, you know, like a dual plane, if that makes yeah. sense. Like there's a, you know, there's, there's a ship here and then there's, let's say your mom's here and whatever. And like, it just, yeah, you said it just, it can be together, you know? And I, then, I was just think an airship. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. Something, yeah, something. You'll, you'll, yeah, but it, it's actually there. Like it's tangibly there. You know, perception is wild. I've been thinking yes. about this a lot lately with perception. Like, I can look up in the sky and say, oh, those are, you know, they're spraying the skies to block out the sun. Another right. person might look up there and go, those are clouds. Right. You know, perception. But now the question is, is what is being brought in to the realm, like you just said? Is that airship being brought into the realm based on her perception? Because, like, she recorded the sound, which means it's there. Well, she didn't know what it was. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But now, yeah. is she, now this is taken to a whole yeah. lot, but is she bringing that in to the realm? You know, Manifestation. It's just, yeah, it gets crazy when you. <laughs> I know. I said, why don't you try manifesting a million dollars? That'd be nice. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking yeah. about with this thing. It's not what I expected to hear. Let's put it yeah. that way. And she was just trying to convince me that, no, I am hearing something. This is crazy. You know, blah, 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 blah. So it's like, all right, I'm just going to let it go. And to much to my surprise, all I can think of is, again, if she's manifesting and projecting it, it's like psychokinesis. You can project energy. You can create doors to open and close, footsteps. You know, people say, oh, I'm haunted. And I'm just like, no, no, you're projecting, you know. And they. It, it's easier for them to think that there's something in the house than it is for them to think I'm a really powerful being with this crazy energy and I can create all of this crazy stuff around me. I really thought my mother was just projecting. But sense. it would. It just wasn't extreme enough. <laughs> No. Well, if you bring the technology back, we could be flying all over the place, you know, and sailing the ocean blue. You know, I know. It's like I know. 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's insane. But again, it's just, you know, it's a crazy world. If we think, let's think like cryptids, for example, you know, you, we'll, we'll use the Loch Ness Monster, you know, just because people always see it like this. It's been, there have been many, many sightings over the last hundred years, especially with technology of sorts. But experts will say, no, the lock isn't big enough to sustain an animal of that size. There's no way in or out. Well, I don't know, portals? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you, you get into that and sit there and think, yeah, what, you know, or like even when they get into like the, the uh, what's his face, the, the big man, the, the big foot. Oh, it's a big foot, yeah. yeah it's so the same like thing. Something like I, that. I or, or is that like a, an edited person, you know, who was maybe once used to be here, not here anymore, and then you're kind of seeing it, you know, there, there's so like imprints much. in time or something. Yeah, like you're you're there at the exact same time to see that shift right. in time, and then you're like, oh my, I saw it with my own eyes, you know. Right. But then if it's gone, then obviously people tell you you're crazy. But you know, it's like it's it's your perception, and that's why I said like mm -hmm. it's so interesting when you go back into perception, because there was somebody I don't know if it was like Dolores Cannon or somebody I listened to one time, and they said like. Everything is happening at the same time, but every person is creating at the same time. So there's all these universes, but they're all meshing together. Right. But they're right. not actually happening simultaneously. Like it's it's just it's wild. Like when you start to think about it. So same thing with you know the Loch Ness monster or anything sure. like that. It's like what can be brought in, or like you said, what could you create? Which then it's there. You know, mm -hmm. or even people when they used to turn into werewolves during the full moon, you know, and that whole thing as well, too. You know, as you start to sit there and think, can a person take on, you know, that personality and become the wolf? Mm -hmm. Because if you think of that movie like Split, you know, where he has multiple personalities and he becomes the beast, then you mm -hmm. sit there and think it's possible, too. Because like you just said, it's it's you are creating it. You know, in well, your you, mind. And, I think we're powerful enough to be yeah. able to create things like that. But I, but I also think, you know, the world is, this planet is full of vortexes, ley lines. Uh, the ancients built ancient structures. There are structures over alleged stargates or power spots. So let's use, for example, again, let's go to Bigfoot, you know, because primatologists will say, no, no, this is just like a, an, like a, a species of sort that's been in hiding. Okay. Let's say that if they've been around all this time, they would know where the power spots are. Yep. I mean, you know, in my opinion, I mean, if you're able to have out of body experiences, for example, you would know where the power spots are. Like, I don't think it's all that inconceivable to think that there are beings here even dimensionally or interdimensional that know how to use what this planet has and that's gateways there are they're, definitely they're, they're everywhere and that's the thing is like you just said i mean things can come in or be or they're ever existing you know sure. you go to the ether and everything is here you know i used to see like uh in chicago i used to see a lot of shadows you know walking around and whatever and i'll never forget i was training one of my clients and there were, th there were three ladies in the room. And I right. remember, I go, do you look out the window and see that? And they were like, what is going on? I go, I don't know what's going on. What's going right on? I don't want to know what's going on. <laughs> right. In the windows. Right. And I remember uh, my client, Carrie, at that time, you know, her and her friends were like, uh, I don't know if, you know, I'm, I'm coming back here, whatever. I go, that's the thing. So I'm using that as an example. But, you know, right. we, there's so many things existing at the same time. So, yeah, like you said, yes. if there's a portal, a gateway, a ley line, you know, that, might bring, that might bring bring things in or maybe certain things during certain time periods, right. during full moons, eclipses, you know, things like that. Maybe sure. there's a thinning, they say a thinning of the veil. So then like there's a thinning where that allows things to kind of maybe be able to be here in the in the physical, mm -hmm. but also in the spiritual at the same time. Because, sure. you know, I think of like, um, you know, when people people pass, you know, they're still here. They're, they're yeah. still around, you know, they, right. sometimes they come as a hummingbird or something or whatever else, but right. they're still here, you know, they still have that presence. So, you know, I think it's just, once again, it's us connecting back to like figuring these things out and, and, and kind of going into that. Otherwise we just kind of think that like all of this is like fairy tales because we've been fed mm -hmm. it in movies, but I've started to realize that we are very powerful. We're very connected. We're very in tune. 
And the more in tune you become, it's yeah. just, it's wild what the, what the actual body can do and, 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 perce- and, and, and perceive. And I've right. started to learn even like dousing with my hand, you know, cause you can just pick up on energy spots just right. based on your hands. You know, you walk into a place and it's right. your hands are antennas, you know? So right. I think, but if we feel that that can happen or we eat a lot of foods with by Monsanto, you know, that are trying to <laughs> tame all frequency, right. then we won't be able to perceive that or take that in or, it kind of gets too maybe scary, like you said, and then people start going, oh my gosh, you know, I don't- Well, we hinder ourselves. Yes, yes. I, I think, you know, I, I believe, I always say we're a species with amnesia. I believe that that we just need to tap back into ourselves to be able to learn our true potential. And that's even tapping into the, the total consciousness. You know, I, I did this experiment this one time. I've talked about this before. And I took this really obscure word that people haven't used in like in a million years, like swell. Who the hell uses swell anymore? Nobody uses swell. So I put it out there. Went, oh, that's really swell. Do you know, I started hearing people say it. I started seeing it on television. I'm going, see, that's just kind of creepy. <laughs> swell. But anyhow, it, it just shows that if you put in all of this phenomenal intention, into the collective consciousness that it does get picked up. Like it just gets absorbed. It's a complete manifestation. You know, I don't know. I wish we had more time because I'd like to get into matrix stuff and all kinds of fun stuff. It would just be a lot of fun, but um, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. And I loved everything you had to say. I'm really sorry about the channel. That just, obviously, somebody out there is a little bit frightened of some of the things that you're coming out. I think Dolly mentioned it earlier. Government's a bit concerned maybe about some of the things that you are educating people on. I mean, you know, people need to know. That's kind of how I see it. And that's why when the first time I ever got deleted on Instagram, I just decided I'm going to be everywhere then. I'm going to put it on every platform and I'm going to keep creating accounts and I'm going to keep whatever. And then even with the TikTok thing, I decided, okay, well, I'm going to work on Telegram and our right. Telegram channel has you know, grown tremendously and I'm thankful for everybody coming and joining. But right. you know, it's, I decided, okay, we'll do Telegram too. You know, we'll do TikTok, we'll do YouTube, we'll do Rumble, you know, any, whatever it may right. be. Because I realized right. the information needs to be out there because we've been lied to and, de- and, and deceived for so long. You know, it's, right. it's, and 2020 was like really the catalyst of just, it gets old. Right. You know, same playbook as 1976, but you know, it gets really old. So my whole thing is, I hope that it can provide solutions. I hope that it can get people out of fear and I hope that it can help, you know, with information to awaken the minds and provide people solutions. And even this talk is just to, you know, talk about things that maybe instinctively people feel. You know, and then they go, right. oh, you know, I kind of, that makes more sense, you know, than the mummies right. and the pyramids and things like that, you know? And I think that's what we need to do. We need to tap back into that, like our instant. Right. But right. other than TikTok, it is what it is. You know, we just, we keep going and I'm thankful to we be here and to talk to you and, you know. Thank you. Have- well, we have millions of people who listen. We're an FM station. And so we have a lot of audio servers. We do better audio, obviously, because we're FM and we are in Roku. And I hope that... You know, there's a lot of people who will go and seek you out um, and listen to all of these videos that you put out there because there's a lot of really, really great information. And a lot of it is like, you know, forever I've been saying blah, 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 blah. Some stuff I can't say and talk about that you've talked about and you know why. But anyway, I'm going, I said that exactly. I completely get this guy. And people would look at me and go, Okay, Michelle. And I'd be like, now I'm just like, no, no. Now I can say, now I then I was just sending off links. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you need to listen to this because he explains it better than I do. <laughs> but sometimes, it, sometimes too, we 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 overcomplicate things yes. with our descriptions. And that happens. You know, like when I used to make first started making content, I would make it so complicated that when I look back, I go, I don't even know what I was trying to say. You know, like I was like trying to be like just too detailed, but you know, I've, I've tried to break things down and, and like you said, make it just straight to the point and simple, you know, so that it's just really just an easy way to understand because like I said, even with our, you know, the sick care system and all the other stuff, got like 8,000 terms for why people, you know, have an illness, but it's like mm-hmm. just poisoning your body, 
You know, it's a, you just, yeah, just cut, to the, cut to the chase. What do I have? <laughs> That's right. it. You know, let's right, keep right. It simple because the simpler it is, the more it starts to make sense. And this whole journey for me, like all the topics we talked about today, it just the simpler it gets, the easier it is to understand. You know, rather right. than like it's so complicated. It and doesn't have like, to be because right. people are already confused. Vibration, frequency. I mean, you know, Nikola Tesla talked about it. The whole world is about based on mathematics, vibration, and frequency. But that really goes over a lot of people's heads. So I think you, if you break it down into more of a layman's terms, they're like, wait a minute, I get that. You know, as, as to how it makes you feel and how certain things or certain people don't jive with our energy yep. and foods and that's, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it, it's a really big thing. So I, I thank you for taking the time to do them all and uh, checking out the website. Um, I know I have, and I will be putting it in order because I'm just all about it. So, you know, I've already sent it off to people as well. So tell everybody, of course, about, you know, where you, what your website is. It's been up here, flitting and around, but just for our audio listeners. So they can find more information on cultivateelevate.com. Our website has a plethora of information out there for blogs and all types of things. And then we have a bunch of different superfoods to help heal the different meridian pathways, because that's what I'm really big on, understanding what meridian pathway needs to be healed. You know, like pearl powder for the eyesight, dragon's blood for the skin, chilajot for detoxing, but just all different superfoods to just address the root cause. Because when I went to all the professionals, they would tell me it was genetic and I was getting older and it just was always the same story. And what I really realized was, you know, if I clean up my diet, I clean up my terrain, my body will just heal. And yes. so that's what Cultivate is all, Elevate is all about. You can find us also on Telegram, Rumble, YouTube, Instagram, all Cultivate Elevate. There's a bunch of videos on there too, but I hope that the information can help resonate and also help provide you with a solution with anything that you're going through or just general information to help heal your day. Right, right. Well, I'm glad that Amelia, <laughs> I knew she's always on TikTok. And I said, I don't have that kind of time, Amelia. She goes, and she was always sending me your videos. <laughs> like okay <laughs> that sounds perfect so uh, so i'm really glad we connected i will email again and get you some links and things like that and um you know all of your links are also in the show description wonderful well thank you for having me on and if you ever want to do another i'm sure we can do a bunch of rabbit holes i i would love to do another i think if we could piece together a few more you know bits of content that will keep us here and not knock us off much as I would love to do one of those, <laughs> uh, definitely I would love to do it again. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. And if anybody has any questions about any of the topics we talk, just send me a message. But you guys have a lovely night. <laughs> and you as well. Thank you. you very much, Matt. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Well, we've come to the end of another fantastic show Bit of a slow start, of course, with internet issues. Thank you for that. But I'm glad that we were able to finally connect. And very informative show. Very informative. Too bad about, you know, his account because he had hundreds of thousands of followers. And thankfully, you guys can connect with him on other platforms. And just go have a listen. I know that Amelia posted a few things on the Outer Realm Facebook page just to give you an idea of some of the things that he talks about. And um, as a lover of ancient history, I really enjoyed that part of everything. So big thank you to Matt Rose from Cultivate Elevate for joining us this evening. Uh, big thank you to Folgers Coffee for sponsoring the show. Big thank you to Dr. Snick, a.k.a. Justin Snicker. Big thank you to Steve McGinnis. And next week, guys, well, actually, I won't say next week. I'm already ahead of myself again. Listen to me. Anyway, we're bringing back Alexander Chekeskiewicz, who was, or he is, the author of Deja Vu, Has Everything Already Been. He's done part one with us. Just the archives went through the roof. He's just a talented young man. Age of 17, he wrote this book. And you, my gosh, I've, I've read the book. It's, it's phenomenal. Anyway, we're doing a part two. And he's going to be discussing... Not just Atlantis, but its connections to other ancient civilizations, as well as talking about these civilizations. It was a pre-recorded show. 
because he is in Poland. But I'm going to be in chat with you guys tomorrow night. It is phenomenal. This is such, it was always such a pleasure to interview Alexander. And, and I don't say interview because I don't think I ever interview anybody. As you can see, it really is just about having an amazing conversation. So check him out for part two tomorrow night. I will meet you guys and chat and we can converse that way. Until then, have a terrific Thursday and we'll...